In the kingdom of Dor, where soups of fixation, Ooh, I can smell it. they choose one special day to express their elation. Voila. Mm. So when a large rat fell in the terrine, oh, your highness, it caused a premature end to the queen. The king, in his sorrow, said, "All soup shall be banished. All rats are illegal." Get me that rat! Then all of them vanished. A terrible darkness fell over the town. No rain and no sun. No hope to be found. Do you think there's a bit of light somewhere in the world? But wait, under that castle, deep down below, a hero emerged they called... Despero. Mom, he's so puny. Well, he's uh, unafraid. He's a mouse who is... Um, he's taught to cower at school and, and uh, be afraid, and he doesn't, doesn't work on him. So he's brave, but he's not, not arrogant. Um, hey, he's just his own person, and... Uh, I don't know. He's a he's good. He's a likable. I'm always reluctant to you know because people say what lessons did you mean to impart, and I would never ever say I'm going to teach you a lesson because I don't know anything. But this is what the mouse means to me. It means being unapologetically yourself, uh, even if you are different. And uh, it also, he, for me, he means so much um, about believing in the impossible and watching it become possible. That's what he means to me. All right, settle down. Ready, class? Oh, wow. What? Mm. Oh. Go ahead. Excellent. Despero. Yes? You didn't cower. Looks like a sword. Can you talk to me a little bit about the responsibilities that the narrator has in this film? Because it's not just reading the text. No, I mean, I think Gary Ross, who's the writer and producer, wanted to do something different, which was not have the narrator be above. He said, once upon a time in a kingdom far away. <laughs> so really the, the narrator is like, as Gary said, a sort of eccentric aunt who kind of goes, hey, the parents are gone. Hey, you want to hear something really cool? Sort of takes them in hand and takes them into some pretty scary areas, I would have to say, the loss of a parent and leaving home and all these things. And um, I think kids are very wise and can, they live in a complicated world uh, as it is today. And I think that it's wonderful to have given them a story that has so many different light and dark areas. I think that's what really makes it different and stand out. It's not it's not in any way patronizing to children. It kind of hopes and expects them to deal with some quite challenging stuff. Um, it doesn't kind of idealize the world. It's quite real. Kids are living in the same world that we're living in and I don't know uh, any kid that goes and gets on the school bus every day knows just how hard the world can be. Step onto that school bus. It's all there, you yeah. know. And so why wouldn't you tell them a story that says this is the way, this is the truth. It's really hard and uh, terrible things happen and it's really beautiful and wonderful things happen. I think that's the, dory, the duty of a storyteller to put all that in there. Did a book ever speak to you? Almost like it was written for you. Despero loved it all. Every bit of it. The truth, the justice, the bravery, the sword fighting. He even loved things you wouldn't suspect. The story said she was a prisoner, but that wasn't totally true because she had hope. And whenever you have hope, you're never really anybody's prisoner. Someday, my prince will come. But how did she know that? Yeah, how did she know that? My first session, I went to England for it, and I recorded with Emma Watson. And then also, when I was recording scenes with my schoolmates, they had hired actors to uh, play those parts, even if they weren't necessarily going to be doing the movie, so that I would 
have something to respond to. So that was very nice. It was great that I, I got to work with Matthew Broderick for a couple of days and um, it was quite free. We were in a room that had quite a lot of space where I hear that usually you're in quite a small little booth on your own. So it was great to have him there and to have this free moving boom so it meant you could kind of interact and you could move and I think that helped with the voice work. Will you promise to finish your story and tell me how it ends? Yes. It will be my quest. Your quest? You are a very brave mouse. Thank you, my good gentleman. Uh, whoa! I always know with Gary that, that I'm going to be in very good hands. He's going to let me try all kinds of foolish things, and in the end, we're going to find the right way. Yeah, he was very hands-on, and you know, I'm very thankful to him. You know, It's my first animated film. I hadn't really done this before, and he gave me a huge amount of guidance and was incredibly supportive. He understood the book, and I've listened to him talk about the book, and um, has made me understand the book in a way that I didn't even understand it. He brought so much intelligence and um, read it with so much depth that he's made the story new and brought a whole new... Uh, a whole, it, it's my story plus his story and it's wonderful. Come on, try being brave. <laughs>